So I'm Jamie, for those who don't know me. Um, I help run the game space community here along with uh, a lot of you, <laughs> with tons of help. Um, so what I wanted to talk about uh, for my first act of the night is um, a tool that I like to use, a really a set of tools called Hex and OpenFL. Hey. That's cool. So yeah, um, and how it relates to Flash and ActionScript um, and so on. Just out show of hands, who has heard of either Hex or OpenFL before? Yeah, so that's what I expect. Um, even among game developers, like I feel like this set of tools uh, does not have enough awareness for how amazing it is. So, um, so I've been making games, you know, independently for quite a while now. Um, even when I was working full time, uh, like commercial game studios, I would try to do little independent projects on the side. And uh, this was the first one that I kind of developed in earnest as like my own little indie game while I was working at other game studios called Kigo. Um, so I started this, uh, gosh, I don't know exactly how long ago it was at this point, um, probably around a decade ago was when I, I uh, started creating this. So at the time I was working uh, in ActionScript 2, um, so not even like the most current version of ActionScript, which for those who don't know is the programming language that's kind of coupled with um, Adobe's Flash um, you know, platform. So at the time, uh, you know, I knew I wanted to make web games um, just because, you know, even then there was just all this flourishing of really cool creative games that were running in browser. Um, and it was kind of like, felt like a very new and exciting thing at the time, like, oh, players don't have to like download, you know, a bunch of scary executables. And, you know, you have this huge wide base of like the internet, <laughs> basically for your audience. Um, so that was really cool uh, just to be able to like create small, simple games and upload them. Um, and there was just this really great ecosystem coming up. Uh, and you know, at the time, Flash really was the best option. Like this was before the time of HTML5 um, and games kind of being able to run natively inside of a browser without a plugin installed. Um, but Flash was ubiquitous, right? It, in terms of like the amount of people who had it installed, um, it was basically your best option in terms of widest potential audience. Um, and also, Flash was a really great platform to develop for, um, although not as good at that time. ActionScript 2 uh, was not the most fun to develop in. Um, but I started working on this game, Kigo, in ActionScript 2, and I really was enjoying it. Um, when I say that I was working in Flash, like a lot of times, uh, I think people have the misconception uh, that that means working inside the Flash editor. Right, so if any of you do like you know art or animation um, or anything like that, you might have used the Flash editor, um, and that's not what I was doing. Um, not to disparage the Flash editor, um, it's really great for a lot of things. For game programming, I found it to be very counterintuitive, um, just because I'm used to like opening up a text file and <laughs> writing some code, and um, you know just the the method of kind of associating code with like particular timelines and resources. It just wasn't something that I could really wrap my head around at the time. I hadn't used any tool that was really comparable. Um, and it just it wasn't the way that my, I had been trained as a programmer to kind of approach things. So, um, so rather than working inside, and also the other thing was uh, I didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> so I didn't want to shell out for Flash and I didn't want to pirate Flash. Um, so the alternative um, was uh, there's this whole community of open source Flash developers. Now, you know, while Flash itself uh, is proprietary, um, for whatever reason, I think just because, you know, uh, Flash game development was this really like DIY kind of space where lots of like first time game developers uh, were using that as like their platform in because it was a fairly easy platform to get a gate quick game up and running quickly on. Um, so it was attracting lots of people and uh, it was attracting a lot of open source developers for whatever reason. So this was a website that I frequented that uh, I don't think is around anymore, open source Flash. Um, but there's people developing all these tools, releasing them for free um, as open source projects to try to kind of push Flash in that direction of being uh, this accessible tool um, that you know was couldn't only be used by people who could spend you know a lot of money to get the commercial editor and stuff like that so this MTASC was the tool I started using which was an open source command line compiler for ActionScript 2 
Um, so that's what I was originally developing Kigo in, which is like write the code in a text editor, compile with this free command line text, you know, or compiler. Um, so then ActionScript 3 came out, which was a huge step up from ActionScript 2 as a language. Um, and just, you know, everything about it made life so much easier um, as a developer. Uh, and so around that same time, so I was hoping, you know, that this MTASC, which was an ActionScript 2 compiler, I was really hoping that the developers of that or somebody in the community would update it um, and, you know, allow it to compile ActionScript 3 because I really wanted to, to uh, port Kigo, which was still in development, over to ActionScript 3. Um, but uh, I got a little bit irked at the time because the developers of MTASC and the community uh, started developing this thing called Hex. Um, and I didn't know what it was, and it was this, it had a compiler, but it was its own language, like, uh, that they had made. It wasn't ActionScript. Um, and so I just didn't kind of understand the point of it, like, why would you create like yet another programming language um, and like go, it just seemed to be going off in this direction that I didn't really understand at the time. So I basically just ignored it at the time. Um, but thankfully around the same time, um, Adobe released some free tools, um, not so much open source, but at least you know free, including a free command line compiler for ActionScript 3, which was MXMLC there. Um, and there were other tools like uh, Flash Develop, which is the logo de down there in the lower left, which is basically like a Visual Studio, you know, just this kind of full suite um, code editor and just development environment that you could use. So the tools were getting a little bit nicer. Um, and so that's what I ended up using. I did port Kigo to ActionScript 3 kind of midway through the project just because it made life so much easier. Um, but, you know, I just didn't have like a use for Hex at the time and didn't really understand what it was. Um, so, you know, there's just the proliferation of all these incredible, incredibly creative web games continued, you know, and all these web portals springing up, you know, many of which are still around at the moment and, and operational. Um, so this to me, like as a game designer and also as a game player was like just one of the most exciting spaces for games because like I said, it was like um, you had people of all different skill levels and like, like hobbyists and just a lot of first time game developers were releasing their games on these platforms. Um, but then, you know, uh, some, there were some shifts in terms of uh, technology that affected Flash in a really profound way, um, as some of, probably a lot of you are already aware. So, you know, HTML5 standard came out, which meant that um, a lot of the features that Flash supported that web browsers natively didn't support now were built in to most web browsers um, that appropriately supported the standard. So things like Canvas um, let you kind of get, you know, graphics and to an extent audio, it's still a little finicky, but you know, a lot of the stuff we need for games was just built into web browsers now without needing any kind of proprietary plugin. So that means an even broader audience, right, which is great. Um, so, you know, uh, HTML5 as an open web standard is, is really wonderful for games. Um, but for Flash, you know, there was a lot of talk at the time about like, well, we don't, why do we need like proprietary plugins anymore like Flash? Um, and stuff like that. So there was a lot of kind of naysayers and, and uh, people predicting doom for Flash. Um, another big hit to Flash was um, the release of the iPhone um, and them not supporting Flash on it, including in the Safari web browser um, in the iPhone, which, you know, with that becoming, you know, increasingly like a platform where a lot of people were playing their games on, um, it kind of was you know, not a death knell for Flash because Flash still exists, but it definitely um, put Flash into kind of a decline because why would you kind of make your primary game development platform something that's not going to allow you to release on iPhone, right? That's, that's a very limiting thing. Um, so all these things kind of added up to um, mean that a lot of the, these Flash developers, and there are tons and tons of game developers using Flash as their primary platform, um, but it was kind of, everybody was looking to figure out what to do at that point, and Flash was looking like it was kind of on its last legs. So enter Hex. Um, so this is where, you know, myself and a lot of other Flash developers who might not have understood Hex before started to realize the purpose of it. So Hex is uh, a language, a programming language, that 
uh, has, that can cross-compile to other languages and other platforms. So you write code, you write your game in the hex language, which is actually very similar uh, syntactically in many other ways to ActionScript 3, um, which has a lot in common with like C Sharp, Java. Um, you know, you'll, it'll be a very familiar, it's a high level programming language that you can easily learn. Um, but then you have all of these other uh, types of programming languages that you can cross compile to. And what that means basically is you can write your game uh, once in hex language and have it run natively on you know, any device that can run any of these things. So that includes Flash, but it also includes HTML5, iPhone, Android, um, you know, you can just compile natively to all these different targets. Um, so that's very appealing in and of itself. Um, but then there are these kind of related technologies that are built uh, on top of the hex language um, that really make it just incredibly powerful and just let you get up and running much more quickly. However, um, it's also a bit of like a acronym soup effect at the moment. It's not kind of like, um, uh, it doesn't have the appeal of Unity or certain tools where it's just like you download one thing and then out of the box, like you're good to go. And you know, there's a bit more kind of figuring out of like what are these different things. Even if you don't end up having to meddle with them, like it just confuses people. It confused me in the beginning a lot. Like, so you know, I say development with Hex and OpenFL. Um, so Hex is the language. OpenFL is a set of libraries uh, that go with that language that are written in Hex. Um, and basically, what they do is they replicate the Flash. ActionScript 3 standard library, which has a lot of built-in functionality that's really useful for making games. Um, but it replicates that in you know, all the targets that Hex can cross-compile to, meaning like there's a C++ equivalent of like the Flash libraries, um, and there's an HTML5 equivalent now. Um, so you write them all in Hex, you use these OpenFL um, functions that are supplied and you know for one thing like a lot of flash developers just right away moved over to this platform because it was somewhat trivial to convert your existing ActionScript 3 code base and games over to uh, Hex and OpenFL um, so in that case like it was a life raft for a lot of people um, but also just in my opinion the flash API the flash libraries um, are really great set of tools for making games. Like there's a reason, you know, why so many first time developers used ActionScript 3 and the Flash uh, code base to build on. It just gives you so many things and it's set up in a very nice way. Um, there are also some game libraries that are quite popular um, that were built on top of ActionScript 3. So Flixel um, was one that a lot of people used. Um, and so HexFlixel is the port of that to Hex. And it's actually, you know, at this point because of Flash being in decline, HexFlixel is actually like much more actively developed than Flixel, the original ActionScript 3 version it was based on. Um, but that's a set of you know game making libraries and a framework basically that can get you started. So you'll see um, lots and lots of uh, games from game jams being made in this. There's lots of global game jam games and Ludum Dare games that were made with HexFlixel. Sometimes you'll see the logo <laughs> popping up and stuff. Not quite as much as you'll see, you know, the Unity logo, things like that. But, um, you know, the nice thing about all this is um, it's all open source and free. So not just free as in there's a free version um, of a proprietary set of tools that, you know, the owner is being kind enough to let you use. And if they're not feeling kind later or if some other company purchases the tools, it might get taken away, right? Like, you know, Flash developers all experienced their platform of choice kind of being taken away from them <laughs> in a more broad sense, just with the audience kind of diluting for it. But um, if anybody's ever used like XNA or other game development tools like that, where they've just like completely gone out of existence, <laughs> like, you know, the pain, right? Especially if you have like a, a game project that's in progress, uh, you want to be able to, you know, just have that kind of security system that comes with open source. So that's a big part of the appeal to me, right? It's like, if something's broken about any of these tools or this framework, um, if I need to fix it as a programmer, I can, because I have full access to the code that is built on. Um, you know, 
it's highly likely that somebody else in the community will be fixing it because <laughs> um, there's just a wider range of people contributing to these tools. Um, and more than that, you know, in the absolute worst case scenario, like I can fork the code, I can do whatever I want to kind of um, make sure that I don't lose my work and end up stranded. Um, so this, these set of tools have been used to create some pretty high profile games. Probably the most high profile is the game Papers, Please, um, which some of you might have played as, you know, on many best of the year lists when it was released a couple of years ago at this point. Here's a game from Ludum Dare created by Will Blanton, uh, who creates a lot of great YouTube tutorials about Hex and OpenFL and Hex Flixel. Um, so this was the number one overall uh, voted game for Ludum Dare a couple of times ago. Can't remember exactly which one. Sometime within the past couple of years. Uh, it's a fun, fun pillow fighting game you can check out. And I've been using it um, for a lot of the game jams that we've been having here. So um, I sometimes will use tools that have more of like a visual editor and you know, in the kind of Unity or Construct 2 style. Um, but if I have like kind of a simple enough game idea, um, I like to just go ahead and use uh, Hex and OpenFL. Um, so you know, you'll see like these don't look like much visually necessarily. That's just kind of my own style. <laughs> this is not a limitation of Hex or OpenFL. But um, Flash and ActionScript 3 has a lot of good built-in tools to programmatically draw stuff. So a lot of times when I make these little prototypes, I'll just programmatically draw things. Um, but uh, you can also do you know, any kind of 2D art you would expect from Flash. Um, you can also do 3D games. So I would say that the 3D support is um, not going to cover everything that you might expect in a tool like Unity or Unreal. Um, you know, it's, but it will run cross-platform. Uh, so, you know, if you're, you can compile the web target and get WebGL and, um, you know, compile to mobile and get OpenGL ES and, and so on. So this is a demo from a, an engine that's built on top of Hex and OpenFL called um, Babylon Hex, I believe. Um, so, you know, and there's, there's starting to be more and more of these and uh, a lot of them will be free and open source, which is lovely. Um, there's even tools, you know, if you are wanting more of a visual editor style, um, like I've grown to really like uh, tools like Construct 2 that have just everything integrated. Um, of course, that's always convenient. Um, and uh, Stencil is an example of a tool that's kind of in the Construct 2 vein um, and is actually built on top of Hex and OpenFL, which I didn't realize <laughs> until I was kind of poking around, looking up some resources to talk about this. So, um, so that's really cool. Uh, Stencil is also cross-platform, whereas Construct 2, unfortunately, is still Windows only at the moment. So, um, so that's nice. You know, so many of these things that are related to Hex and OpenFL are cross-platform, open source. Um, you know, so I want to keep making web games. Like, I think you know. The reports of Flash's demise have been slightly exaggerated. Um, you know, it still is powering a lot of websites and web games. Um, and you know, increasingly with places like itch.io, um, there's you know this resurgence. I think of like web portals at the moment and ways to actually um, commercially support yourself to release games into a marketplace where you can actually charge money for them. And they're sort of like an established place people can go. Um, you know, a lot of the old school way that web developers would support themselves is to release their games on these web portals, and they still exist. You know, so it's not, uh, you don't have to only release your game on like Steam. <laughs> it's not like the only viable way to, to make money and support yourself. Um, you know, there's Steam and there's mobile, but there's still web portals as well. And itch.io is one that I, I recommend for sure can set your own price for your games and it has a really good community of players. So that's my basic overview. Um, I'm going to, when we post the materials from this, post a bunch of links to resources to some tutorials and places where you can download the tools. Um, it's hex.org and openfl.org. But yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to message me. Um, that's my Twitter handle. So thanks.